Welcome to Cairo Author Mastery On with Jess Sherman. I'm super excited for this call. Um, registered holistic nutritionist teacher, although I would say educator. I know you've, you've had a, uh, an iteration in your life of being a teacher, but more than teaching, I think because you've evolved into such an important part of people's lives, not only in the nutritional sense, but you're teaching, I would call you an educator and a movement creator. The author of the Raising Resilience book, which is an incredible book about helping people to understand the process of food for self-healing. Welcome, Jess. I'm excited to have you on our call. Uh, thanks so much. Excited to talk about something I could talk about forever. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I know we all feel very passionate about uh, the, the things that we work in and write on. Um, and you're no different. I know that you've um, had such a significant impact on so many people's lives. I'd like, if I could, just to ask you to just share a little bit about your book, the it's, it's such an important book in terms of the topic and I'd love people to know a little bit more about that before we, we dive deep into, you know, what that has meant for your profession. So the book, um, it came out a couple of years ago and um, I got to say, like, I, I, I wrote it because I just had to get it out of me. It was one of those kind of, I don't know, maybe birthing processes. Um, it's I, because I had, I, you know, had this experience as a mother of being super overwhelmed and confused. I mean, when I, when I first became a mother, I have three children now, when I first became a mother, I was just finished nutrition school. And, um, so I knew about nutrition, but I was completely overwhelmed with the task of keeping my baby healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember very distinctly, like, I just wanted to crawl into a hole, like literally take my baby, take my, my husband and just like hunker down until the world figured it out and we could be healthy. Um, and, uh, I, and then I realized very quickly that you can't do that because we also are hardwired for community and we need people and living in isolation is, is not, it's not fun for anybody, but especially for uh, parents because we just, we need each other. We need, it takes a village, right? So, um, so then I was like, okay, I need a, I need a mindset shift and I need to figure out how to make this simpler and how to find some confidence. And then when I started engaging in community, um, like at the time we literally did a kind of escape a little bit. Like we were like living on our little homestead. We built our house, we did our own stuff. Um, so when I started to engage in community again, I realized that I wasn't alone in this um, and that there was a lot of angst and a lot of fear and a lot of confusion amongst parents. And so I set my mind to try to simplify that, um, to say like, this should not feel so hard, you know? So out of that experience grew the book um, I, and I, you know, went into clinical practice and I, I started saying the same things over and over and over and I started to really distill down the need to know is, you know, we're all busy, busy parents and don't have a lot of bandwidth. So what, what is it that we need to know and what's going to give us big bang for our buck? Um, and so that's where the concepts of the book came about. And I was like, you know what? I, people don't need to hear this from me. People could, could read this in a book. And so I decided to write the book. That's a really common story as the practitioners like it. That birthing process is something that I hear a lot when I talk with practitioners who've, who've written a book. There's, there's this calling, there's this need, and the story is already there within us. And it sometimes just takes some type of a catalyst or some type of experience, uh, our own experience or something from, from our, our patient or client database to bring that out. So specifically, what, what was it within you? You said it was like this birthing process, but what was the challenge you were facing, the the the, the pain you're experiencing that you felt resonated with other people? Um, I think it was that sense of confusion and helplessness because, you know, we know, we all know what, see what's going on with children. More children are getting chronic illness and allergies and um, uh, autoimmune diseases are creeping in earlier and earlier and um, behavior and learning issues. I mean, my background before this was a teacher and, um, you know, more kids than not were struggling with something. Yes. And uh, so I think, so there was a sense of like, oh my gosh, how do I protect my child? And then there was also, oh my gosh, something is happening to my child. What do I do? And um, that's, I think, the common experience. Uh, there's also this systemic forgetting of the basics. 
right? Of because I, I mean, I, I say, I say, you know, the process of raising resilience really isn't about learning new stuff. It's about tuning into what we already know that children need. They need space. They need clean air and clean water and good food and connection. Like there are some really basic things that, as life gets really busy, we we tend to forget about. Um, so I'm constantly just reminding, like whittle it, whittle it away, you know, whittle away the the mess, the clutter, the stress, um, and get back to the the authentic piece. Um, so there, so I think I think that would be the shared experience. Is this, you know, I want to do something, but what do I do? Yeah, absolutely. And, so it's fair to say that that what we experience in our own lives is reflected in the lives of our patients. And if we can have this epiphany and have this clarity and give them the tools, the, the remembrance, as you said, of those things that we've forgotten and, and lead them and guide them, then the, our, our words and our work and therefore our book becomes the opportunity to, to reconnect and, and redirect. So th that's true for every practitioner who has a client base. The, the same is going to be true for them, irrespective of what the nature of the relationship you have is. So uh, I think that's a really important lesson for all of us to share. But let, let's talk a little bit more about your book as well in terms of where it led you. So I know that the, result, right, um, the, the Raising Resilience talks about food as a tool for self-healing, but it's also for growth and learning, supporting and enhancing the appropriate behavioural changes, um, the ability to be able to cope with change, adversity and stress. So how did the book lead to or lead to or even magnify your work with your, with your patient or client base? Um... Well, it's interesting, you know, it, it, it's, you know, it, at, at the same time, it was also a, um, you know, that saying, I think it was Michelangelo who was saying, you know, you chip away the, chip away the car, the marble until you see the, I'm butchering Michelangelo, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what it is, you, 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 you chip away until you see the sculpture, until it reveals itself, right? So it was also that kind of process for me. Um, oh, you froze a little bit. All right, is the connection still okay? Yeah, you froze. Oh, I'm going to have to get that part. Did you, I, I didn't think I froze. I was looking at you going, I think you've frozen because you're still frozen. Am I back now? No, I'm still you're frozen. Still are you, can you see yourself moving? Because I'm moving and, okay, you're back. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. So if we go from when I asked the question and just, which was really yeah. food, self-healing, how does that, yeah. Where did it take me? Yes. Where did it take you? Where did it take me? Okay. So, um, it's interesting when we, when I talk about this, the book being a birthing process, um, there was two things going on. One was that I had this message that had to get out of me. And the other one was that I needed to distill my thoughts um, into something coherent because that's just something for me, I, I, for some people and for me, the process of writing really brings clarity. So it wasn't so much like, oh, I have this thing, I need to put it on paper. It was more of an evolution. It was a little bit of that, but it was also this sort of evolutionary process for me to distill um, what it is that I want parents to know. So, um, so where it, what it brought me is clarity about a process. And the interesting thing about a book is that you know the book is a book. It's like a it's like a unless I want to rewrite it, republish it, and like you know do a second edition, which I do want to do at some point. It's like it's like set there, right? And I didn't quite realize, whereas my, my thoughts about it are evolving. They've evolved since I wrote the book. So what I thought the book was going to do is give parents a manual. And then, um, and then I was going to create a course. I always had the intention of creating a course around it to walk people through it, which I've done. Um, but what I didn't anticipate, or I guess I, I kind of had a hunch, but I didn't really have clarity around was how uh, my process would evolve um, over time, which is the nice thing about a course is that you can evolve it and you can change it and you can re-record videos and you know do all kinds of things which you can't do in a book. So now I'm at the point where um, 
you know, it's a great resource. It's a great resource to get people started. Um, but the process that I walk people through in the book is slightly different. I have, it's, it's very similar, but I have different language around it. Um, I have a whole visioning process that's not talked about in the book. Um, so where, so it brought me a lot of clarity, I would say that. And now it's a nice resource for people who can't access me to, for coaching. They can at least have the book, which will get them started with the concepts. And then we have a Facebook group around it too. So we can, we can have an evolved conversation there as well. And the book also becomes a tool for leveraging as well, building people into a deeper connection, a greater relationship, because you've got the Resilience Roadmap, which is a 12-week transformative coaching program. So how does the book lead into the coaching program for, in terms of the, the client journey from you know, hearing about you, reading the book, moving into saying, Let, let's, let's work with you in that coaching format. And so how, how does that transition take place? And I'll ask a second question after that, but yeah, let, let's talk first about that. Yeah, I think it, I think it does. Um, uh, it's a, like you say, it's a tool. I, I've actually used it a lot to reach out to other practitioners and um, just, you know, given, given it away for free to a lot of people like have it at conferences or, you know, just have it available for, to, to try to connect with people who I, I want to connect with, um, which then will lead into a conversation, which then will, possibly lead into a collaboration. So it's been really helpful that way as a, as a tool. Um, uh, in terms of leading in, I, I mean, the way I imagined it, and I hope it works, is that, you know, you read the book and you realize, oh my gosh, this is a real thing. I now have some tools. I have some information. Um, but there's a very big difference between information and implementation. So some parents can take that information and like run with it and that's awesome like off you go um and some parents are like oh i know i have to do all this stuff but you know it's expensive my kid won't eat it i don't have enough time i don't have enough money like objection of after objection because it's just it's hard it's hard that the um the default right now is not health and wellness right more people are sick than not so um yeah, so, so the, the course is for, okay, you know what? Like you actually can do this. It's just gonna take, uh, we just need to transfer the information into practical ways to implement. Yeah, that's perfect. Actually, you preempted my second question. I'll come back to that in a moment. So the, the book itself is a, is a wonderful tool for people to learn, to, to, to be able to act if they can act and, and to be able to work with you if they feel like what they learn from the book is is relevant and they want to go deeper. So it's always that, that beautiful opportunity of sharing information. The part that you preempted, I was going to ask is, and, and how does that work on a professional basis, not purely just a client basis? So professional gives you the opportunity to, to collaborate, to engage, to sometimes get speaking opportunities, to expand your network. So it has both your professional client uh, opportunities and also your collegial opportunities. So uh, I think, think from what I'm hearing is that the book has been incredible for you in terms of the scope and the impact on your, your career, your professional involvement. So how, how would you say it's impacted you overall by producing all the opportunities that, that has come from being a published author? Um, there's a funny thing about being an author. Like, I don't know. It's, it's sometimes I think it's just smoke and mirrors, you know, like it's, it's sort of like, yeah, I wrote a book. Like anyone can write a book. Um, but then sometimes I think, no, like that's a major accomplishment to have, I mean, it took me a couple of years and if, if I were to do it again, I would do it much differently. It took me that, it took me so long because I was doing this whittling process and my editor was like, bless her because she was so patient. I was like, no, 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 wait, I got a better word for this. Or I, because I was doing this like whittling thing and trying to figure out my process through the act of writing. Um, if I were to do it again, I think I would have a much more clear, um, I have a lot more clarity and then put it on paper. Um, but uh, I can't remember your question. <laughs> what type of uh, collaborations or you know, events that you've been to able to speak on like summits have been a byproduct of, you know, you're, you're sharing your book, you're sharing this information? Yeah, yeah, I have, I've, um, I have much, a much better sense of what I do well and what I don't do well now. 
And you know, what I do really well is, is taking information and turning it into, into implementation and helping the, you know, so, so I, I do work with, with several, you know, I have a lot of med medical partners who know nutrition is really important, but don't have the time to like, you know, do the day to day, how do you feed your family? Like, what's a, what do I do with a turnip? Or, you know, how do I get all of these nutrients? So, so, so the doctors who understand nutrition have time to talk about the importance of nutrition, but not so much the day to day. And so uh, that's the gap that I fill. Um, and so the book has helped me because there's lists. I mean, the subtitle is 36 ways to help your kids relax, learn and grow. And those 36 ways are practical implementation. Do this, do this, do this. Um, and there's much more of them, many more of them in the program. Um, so it fills that hole of what doctors know are important, uh, but can't manage to do. Um, or what parents also know, they know intuitively is important, or they're reading about the gut-brain connection or something, which we talk a lot about in the book. But they're like, well, so what do I actually do? And, you know, what, and then all the questions start pouring out. Uh, so uh, that's the, the hole that I fill and it, it made the, writing the book, the process of having the book allowed me to create clarity around, uh, no, I'm not going to diagnose anything. No, I'm not going to treat anything. I'm going to help you uh, nourish the fundamental processes that the body needs to function well in order for your child to function. So we're going to nourish those things. Um, and see where that gets us and you've done a wonderful job with that so i just again i just i know that your time's super valuable and i appreciate you getting up so early in the morning to have this conversation so i just want to acknowledge your work what you've done um, the impact you have in in the community with you know the, the value added there you are really a, a movement creative what you're doing so jeshum i thank you for your time i appreciate your important contribution and i know that writing a book is a, a, an incredible challenging process two years um it was blood, sweat and tears to get there, but absolutely worth it. And I thank you for writing that book, for the impact you've had in your time today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Take care, everyone.